Kettle Valley Railway was a subsidiary of the Canadian Pacific Railway that operated across southern British Columbia from Midway running to Hope where it connected to the CPR mainline. Opened in 1915, it was mostly abandoned in 1961 with the surviving section west of Penticton seeing their last trains in 1989. When the Canadian Pacific Railway completed the Transcontinental Railway in 1885, the route cut through the Rocky Mountains at Kicking Horse and Rogers Passes, then followed the Fraser River for the remainder of the distance to Vancouver. This route was significantly to the north of the mining towns within the southern interior. Once silver was discovered within the region in the spring of 1887, thousands of Americans flooded into the BC southern interior and essentially took control of the region, claiming Manifest Destiny, a philosophy at the time to drive U.S. territorial expansion. These miners quickly found that it was much quicker and cheaper to get their supplies from the recently completed Northern Pacific Railroad that transited through Spokane. Once word caught on, British Columbia's southern interior was essentially annexed by the United States for mining. In response to this, the CPR built the Crow's Nest Pass line between 1897 and 1898, eventually reaching Midway in the West Kootenays. The Americans pushed their tracks north from Spokane, crossing the 49th parallel with a line called VV&E to Grand Forks, completed in 1905, and another to Princeton, completed in 1909. Provincial and federal officials quickly agreed that a second railway, dubbed the Coast to Kootenay Railway, close to the border was required in order to help preserve Canadian sovereignty of British Columbia and also to retain the valuable mining revenues within Canada. CPR's president, Thomas Shaughnessy, agreed to a plan from the small Kettle River Valley Railway to extend the southern route from Midway. By connecting to the main line at Hope, Kootenay Minerals and Lumber could be moved to the ports at New Westminster and Vancouver. This commitment and action kept BC within Canada. The Kettle Valley Railway was built between 1910 and 1916 under the direction of Chief Engineer Andrew McCullough. He was hired to build the Coast to Kootenay connection through some of the most challenging mountain ranges ever attempted. While some of the line was previously built along the chosen route from Midway to Hope, these were some of the less challenging sections of track along relatively flat valley floor areas. McCullough had the monumental task of connecting these existing rail lines to the CPR mainline. Railway construction of that era was backbreaking, brutal, and dangerous. Thousands of workers, most of them immigrants, were recruited to come to Canada specifically for this work. They toiled in very difficult conditions for years to complete the job and more than a few lost their lives in the effort. One of the most complex sections of the KVR was at Myra Canyon. Built between 1912 and 1914, McCullough hung his railway on the sides of this canyon. At an elevation of 1,280 meters, it is the highest section of the KVR, navigating a deep, steep, and wide chasm carved out by two main creeks. Using nearly 11 kilometers of track to reach around something less than a kilometer wide, it took 18 trestle bridges and two tunnels to do it. McCulloch commented that he had never seen a railway built in such difficult conditions. His engineers aptly called it McCullough's Wonder, a name that stuck for the entire line. Just east of Hope, in the Coquihalla Gorge, the river cut a 300-foot deep channel of solid granite. To avoid the unnecessary expense of cutting a 1.6 kilometer tunnel to bypass the gorge, McCullough determined he could build a series of shorter tunnels and bridges in a straight line through the middle. During his surveying expeditions to determine the alignment of the railway, he was lowered down the edge of the steep cliffs in a basket to survey the planned route. Four tunnels were required to cut a straight line through the gorge. Called the Quintet Tunnels, the name was given because one tunnel had a side blown out during construction, which made it look like two tunnels when looking from certain angles. 
Today we know them as the Othello Tunnels, due to the proximity of the nearest station on the line. All the stations along the Coquihalla subdivision, like Jessica, Portia, Romeo, and Juliet, were named after Shakespearean characters. If you drive the Coquihalla Highway today, you'll notice these names at many of the exits along the southern portion of the highway. You can thank Andrew McCullough for this. He was a big fan of Shakespeare and used the names of his characters for the rail stations. A couple other areas of note along the KVR are the Adra Tunnel, just east of Naramata. It was the longest tunnel on the line at 489 meters in length. Working from both ends, crews worked tirelessly for 16 months before meeting in the middle. The Trout Creek Trestle Bridge in Summerland was the tallest bridge in the line at 73 meters above the creek below. It was known as the infinitesimal bridge, incalculable, inestimable, great, and fathomless. The KVR is most well known for its route from Midway to Hope. However, another subdivision, just past Brookmere, took the rail north through Merritt and onto Spence's Bridge for a more northerly connection to the CPR mainline. At the end of World War I, a branch line was constructed from Princeton to the mines at Copper Mountain. Crushed ore was transported from the mine to the concentrator at Allenby, 10 miles to the north, for processing. Another 8-mile link was added in 1930, from Penticton to Okanagan Falls, which was extended to a Soyuz during World War II to increase fruit shipments to Great Britain. The KVR was taken over by the Canadian Pacific Railway in 1930. In the 50s, the CPR set about upgrading the rail lines on the Kettle Valley Railway as it recognized that a second line through the province of British Columbia was a valuable asset. However, even with the upgrading of the KVR, the building of the Crow's Nest Highway in 1949 had sounded the end of the Kettle Valley Railway. It took over 24 hours to take the train from Midway to Vancouver, but with the completion of the highway, driving took less than half that time. The Coquihalla subdivision was one of the most difficult sections of railway to maintain in North America, with annual snowfalls in excess of 50 feet, rock slides, and forest fires. In 1959, heavy rains dealt a crushing blow, washing out sections of the line. The damage was never repaired, and in 1961, the Coquihalla subdivision was officially abandoned. Over the next several years, the line began shutting down in stages. With the high cost of maintenance and other transportation corridors available, the line was significantly less important to the CP Rail and was merely deemed a branch line. On January 17, 1964, the line saw its last passenger train leave Penticton. One section remained open for freight, which continued to run from Okanagan Falls to Spence's Bridge until 1989 before terminating all commercial use. The entire Kettle Valley Railway was abandoned and the CPR began removing tracks. Some tunnels were caved in by army engineers. The Coquihalla subdivision actually saw the worst of the destruction. First, the Trans-Canada Mountain Pipeline came through the pass, then followed the Coquihalla Highway in the 80s. Most of the old rail bed was then obliterated. A short 16-kilometer section of the railway was left intact. Operated by the Kettle Valley Railway Society, a non-profit charitable organization that welcomes memberships in order to continue the restoration of this important national historic site. Located in Summerland, visitors can relive the past with a ride on the Kettle Valley Steam Railway in a vintage passenger coach or open-air car powered by a restored 1912 steam locomotive. The train rolls through picturesque Prairie Valley dotted with orchards and vineyards and then onto the Trout Creek Bridge with a stunning view of the Okanagan Lake and the canyon below. For those more adventurous, you can hike or bike the Kettle Valley Rail Trail. After the closure of the railway, it was thought the low-grade path would be great for hiking and cycling. The Kettle Valley Rail Trail was born. It is included in the Trans-Canada Trail, a 28,000 kilometer trail that connects every province and territory, connecting 15,000 communities. It is the world's longest multi-use trail and is continuing to grow. In 2003, 
a massive forest fire approached the city of Kelowna. In its path was Myra Canyon. The fire destroyed 12 of 16 wooden trestles and damaged two steel trestles. Following the devastating fires, along with BC Parks, volunteers managed the rebuilding of the burnt and damaged trestles with funding by the government of BC and Canada. In November 2021, an atmospheric river that pulverized the Coquihalla Highway and much of southern BC caused significant damage to the Othello tunnels. The raging river rose above the banks and flowed through the tunnels, damaging much of the protection measures to keep park visitors safe. The thrashing water also eroded the foundations of one of the bridges, requiring complete replacement of the structure. The Kettle Valley Railway was so important to the growth and survival of British Columbia and stands as a remarkable piece of history that we can visit to this day. 